um, I think it's time for us to start. Um, so thank you very much for everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to uh, to take some time to listen to us this morning. Uh, my name is Gareth Dryden from Open Reality. I'm joined by esteemed colleague Jason Butler, who's the uh, senior SC at Zyco, Tintree's uh, main distribution partner in Europe. Um, I'm going to just take a brief moment just to introduce us, and then I'll be handing on to to Jason, who'll go through the Tintree product and specifically how it will accelerate uh, virtual desktop infrastructure. So. Um, a little bit about Open Reality. Um, we, we are uh, a reseller and cloud service provider, managed services provider, been established for 16 years. Um, we've been very much specialists in virtualization, specializing in Citrix and VMware uh, over over the over the years, um, and with a number of services around solution design uh, and, uh, inf and infrastructure. Um, we work with a number of the, the, the top vendors. I mean, we are very much a specialist partner. Um, the vendors that are that are particularly relating to, to what we're talking about this morning are VMware, Citrix, uh, and Tintree, uh, being the, the key partners that we work with in delivering virtual desktop and virtual infrastructure solutions. Um, so a little bit about us and say that the, the product set. So as as a business, we've specialised very much in performance and performance monitoring, applications and application optimization, network testing, network security, and in general, network and IT infrastructure. Um, we've did, we are also able to deliver an, a large number of services around these products, including solution design. Um, full pre-deployment testing, uh, um, full implementation services, uh, following PRINCE2 methodology, uh, full training on all of the solutions and, and things that we sell with the skills transfer. We can do that in a number of different ways. Um, we can also provide detailed analysis um, and, and, and monitoring and, and of what's going on and troubleshooting your networks and making sure that application performance is delivered. And we can provide, you know, um, any level of service you want. Whether you want, you know, just a support desk, a full managed service, or, or, or um, just, just, uh, just, just uh, support. Um, in addition to that, we've been delivering uh, cloud-based and virtual hosting services for uh, a significant number of years under our BrightCloud brand, with application desktop hosting. We also are able to 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 broker a number of other cloud services with the mixing the best technology so you know office 365 azure amazon our own bright cloud and, and delivering hybrid cloud services we offer um, disaster recovery and backup services um, either on premise or, or into cloud uh, as well as other um, you know on premise and hosted uh, security applications and i say um, you know, we're very, very picky in terms of the, the vendors that we work with. Um, so the, the brands that we work with are all classed as best in, best in their field. Um, we've also, and as I say, been around for a long time and supplying into all sorts of different customers of all different sizes, a mixture of, of public and private sector. But I say, I don't want to take up too much of your time talking about us. Um, I know you're all here to hear about Tintree and how that can work and accelerate your VDI. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Jason Butler, who'll uh, take you through. Thank you very much for that, Gareth. Um, yeah, just uh, just before I start, um, any questions that you have, feel free uh, feel free to use the question box, and what we'll do is we'll allocate some time at the end just to just to answer them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you through um, Tintree and what Tintree does and how it works. I'm just going to take my mouse control back. Bear with me two seconds. So yeah, we're going to go through uh, what Tindry is, how it works, uh, and how obviously it can accelerate your VDI environment. So um, 
Today we're all in a virtual world. We Everything we do, all of our infrastructure as a service, all our software as a service, everything is all based around virtual word lo workloads. So these all revolve around a hypervisor of your choice. Um, and really, um, all of our all of our virtual machines are our, are our core business, if effectively. At the end of the day, what we want to concentrate on is all our applications. We know that applications are what drive our business. That's the that's our business critical um, systems, and we want to make sure that our infrastructure supports those applications and help to run um, as best as possible. And what we want to do from an IT support point of view is really want to manage these applications, not have to worry too much about all the complicated infrastructure that goes behind them to support them, to give them that uh, level of performance. So we introduce uh, virtualization, and uh, virtualization is great. Um, it means we can spin up uh, VMs left, right, and center, but therein lies a problem, because we can start actually um, over-provisioning. We can actually um, affect other workloads by introducing virtual machines left, right, and center into our environment. And what we really want to do is we want to be able to place uh, these VMs anywhere. We don't have to worry about or don't want to worry about where they should go, how they should um, affect other systems. Um, but VMware, VM sprawl is very, very commonplace um, in, in all hypervisors, in all environments. Far too easy to spin something up and then um, affect your neighbors with this noisy neighbor problem. So what we want to do is we want to try and um, use a system or develop a system which learns and adapts to these changing workloads um, and not have to worry about where we should put these VMs. So if we look at traditional storage, um, traditional storage has uh, you know, come a long way since its early days, um, but it's still fairly rigid and static. Um, and it usually um, in, involves um, managing RAID groups, LUNs, and volumes. And then we're shoehorning this into a virtual environment. So most of them are blind to these virtualization environments using LUNs and volumes uh, with no VM visibility. Or if they are, it's just, a, um, it's just an overlay on top which manages it. A lot of them are very manual, so manual tuning. Um, we're so used to carving up individual RAID groups of certain performance specifications and putting these VMs dedicated on them. Um, and it kind of takes away from the, the whole point of this virtualization where we've got this pool of, of resources that we want to actually do things with because we end up carving these lens and isolating them to individual purposes. Our quality of service is also very, very manual and can be quite unpredictable when we start changing these things and introducing VMs which could potentially hog the performance and storage of other systems. Uh, and they can be quite rigid. So we, we design these systems and they're very, very good at what they do. However, we start introducing different types of workloads and, and it can really affect the performance of the system. And because we're doing everything based on LUNs and volumes, uh, we want to really try and move move away from this because we don't want to have our performance suffer either way. So with Tintry, we're, we're trying to do something slightly different. What we want to do is we want a system which sees, learns, and adapts to our virtualized environment. We want something that's going to look at the VMware level, VM level. Uh, doesn't matter what hypervisor we use. We want to look at um, these individual VMs. We want to visualize them. We want to create um, these VM, these We want to create these uh, individual snapshots, clones, replications. We want to do it per VM rather than actually having to worry about LUN level commands. We want something that learns, so it, it automatically moves things around. We want something to have automatic quality of service and very, very importantly, performance isolation um, and scaling. And we want something that's really flexible, but we can actually put other workloads on and not have to worry about affecting our main systems. Something that's built for virtualization in a cloud environment. So in most environments, we see storage as a necessary evil. We have to put it in. It has to be there because we need to end up using up this space. Um, but we really don't want to have to manage it. Um, we end up paying uh, you know, storage um, techies a lot of money to actually manage and design these systems. Um, and a lot of companies are coming along and throwing SSD and flash media devices at the uh, at the problem. And, and everything is changing. They are really revolutionizing storage and the way we think about storage. Um, but a lot of systems are, are, are still based on this um, static traditional model. And they're throwing flash at it, uh, but it's not really solving the problem. It's just putting it off. So we want to radically rethink this. We want to actually 
do something where we manage all of the top levels. We want to manage, it, manage our individual VDIS and our virtual applications rather than manage all of the physical infrastructure underneath. We want to meet all of our application requirements and not have to worry about too much about all the infrastructure needs that go into essentially providing that power. So this is where Tintry come in. So Tintry was formed by um, some ex VMware guys, and uh, they they sought to uh, look at a new type of storage system, which was um, entirely built from the ground up to support virtualized environments. So we're looking specifically at VMs and VDisks, and it uses all the latest technology at the time to uh, to accomplish this. We're looking at you know a log structured file system, which they built themselves, which is purely um, evolved around the virtualization space. We're using things like NVRAM technology, hot pluggable flash SSDs and hard disks for cold data in a, in a hybrid device. Uh, we're using technology like inline deduplication and compression to get the most out of that equipment. And obviously everything to go with it, we're using the latest CPUs and, and 10 gig ethernet to actually provide speed to our virtualized environment. And most importantly, we want it to support not just VMware, not just Hyper-V, but everything. So we want to have something that has multi-hypervisor support across the board. So if we look at uh, traditional systems, tr traditional disks, all of our um, latency is waiting for a, uh, for, for a mechanical arm to move across a disk to find individual bits of data. But since we use SSD, this has changed. All of that latency looking for uh, moving physical bits of uh, tin around uh, disappears. So we end up with the latency actually being caused by the software and network. So we need something to actually uh, manage that environment to make sure we get the most um, performance out of the entire system. And of course we can use next gen processors and also next gen um, networking to actually get the data to us faster. But we want to do something else with the way we manage our storage. So if we look at a typical architecture, so if we've got our uh, individual hypervisors in the middle there, we've got our V switches and our VMs at the top, below it all we'll have some sort of physical NAS or a SAN device, uh, and we're presenting individual data stores comprised of individual uh, RAID groups and LUNs, which have a certain access specification. So we have RAID 5 for, for some log data, we have RAID 10 if we want a faster access to, uh, to random um, data. And all of these individual um, v, uh, LUNs are created as separate data stores, which then present to our hypervisor environment, which we sit our VMs on top of. And this is all very well and good and provides us very good um, speed and optimal performance for those individual VMs, but it's not very flexible. We start adding individual VMs to those environments, and we start to um, affect the performance of other VMs using those uh, data stores. What we want to do is radically rethink the way we do this. The way we do this with the Tintry is we put a single Tintry VM store in, and it presents a single data store. Now, this single data store then will present out to all of our virtualization hosts, and it will automatically start moving the data around in the best way it can. So it makes sure that each of the individual uh, VMs has the fastest possible access to disk. It uses um, a unique flash-first architecture, so everything that um, goes through the tin tree itself, the, the storage device, goes through a flash layer uh, before it gets to disk. I'm obviously talking about the hybrid devices rather than an all flash array, um, but this will give us the ability to get a huge amount of performance and still get the longevity of the disks underneath. And we can also radically simplify the way we do our virtualization environment because all we're doing is presenting a single data store to our hosts, um, and the Tintry takes care of everything else. And the way it does this is through this, um, what they call an I.O. profiling system. So every single I.O. request that a virtual, you know, a virtual machine makes um, has its own effective lane to disk. We profile all of this, these 8K blocks, um, and we use um, an onboard MVRAM um, card to actually process them, pass them through to SSD, and then off to um, hard disk when the data has become colder. Uh, and we make sure that um, we get full performance isolation because we're individually carving up this uh, NVRAM and these SSD space per individual VMs. So we can make sure that we get none of this noisy neighbor problem or IO blender that we see um, so common in other types of systems. 
what makes them really unique is the fact that everything goes through SSD. So all data in and out goes through this um, flash layer, this flash first architecture. And it really does increase the speed uh, and really allows us to get a lot of um, extra benefits out of that platform. The SSDs will allow us to have um, the ability to do inline deduplication and compression without affecting the performance of the, of the system. We do some funky things with the MVRAM to make sure that our individual SSDs last longer because we all know that SSDs wear out quicker than disks. Um, so what we do is we do things like um, use our own garbage collection routines. We use um, a method of round robin all the data across the SSD so it's evenly spaced. And we also bunch up writes to make sure it's se the sequential writes run a lot smoother speeds everything up and makes the SSDs last a lot longer. So there's a lot of intelligence that goes on underneath the, underneath the hood. But the really important thing is that the Tintree device itself talks to the hypervisor layer all of the time. So it looks at all of your individual virtual machines and it sees how it's accessing the data. Because we've got this, we've got this level of flexibility and we've got this level of um, integration, which so far we, we didn't have before, we've got the ability to do things like auto-align all of our IOs. So instead of aligning your disk sectors to the, uh, to the individual sectors on the disk, because we own the entire um, storage underneath all the way through to the NAS layer at the front, all the way through to the operating system inside that VM, we can automatically align all your IO requests to make sure you get the most effective use of, of disk. And this is all done because of this hypervisor integration we've got. We've also got the ability to look at any individual VM and monitor the performance of all of your VMs. So we can see things that the hypervisor can see. And that other storage arrays just couldn't see at all because of the way we uh, we query this data. So it keeps an eye on all of your VMs, sees how they're running, and it can make sure that none of those individual VMs are encroaching upon other VMs' um, I.O. So what we want to do is radically rethink the way we do our storage. And we want to do this, firstly, by doing everything per VM. So it's all very well and good snapshot an entire learn, but that can affect all of our users. We have multiple VDI um, clients on your uh, data store. If we snapshot the underlying volume, we affect all the performance. What we want to do is get away with that idea and get away from that idea completely and go for a per VM model. So everything we do affects just that particular VM uh, and won't affect anything around it. So we can do things like per VDIS performance isolation. So we, we can actually split up the disk even within a virtual machine and make sure we isolate that performance. We want to be able to query those VMs to find out whether they've got any bottlenecks anywhere. So we can actually do that on a per VM level. We can apply quality of service and we can do it automatically or we can manually do it for a service provider or we have multiple um, customers or uh, departments in our environment. We might want to give certain departments much better quality of service than others. For instance, the director's, uh, uh, director's VDI sessions, you might want to give them a, a much better level of performance than, uh, than your ordinary users. We want to be able to do snapshotting, cloning, and also this, this technology called Zinc, Zinc VM, which I'll come on to a bit later, uh, and also be able to replicate these individual VMs without having to worry about um, our, our cloning hierarchy, if you like. We also want to see everything much simpler. So try and present it to the user as a per data store capacity, per data store performance, and a per data center environment if we want to manage multiple devices. So we try and make it as simple as possible. So we've got the interface is very, very simplistic, very powerful, but also very simple for us to use. So we can see that it's a web-based GUI, which allows us to look at, um, at the top here, we have data store performance. This will give us um, up-to-date metrics um, of what's actually happened to the system right now. So we can see things like IOPS, throughput, latency, and flash hit ratio. And we always expect, always expect to see the flash hit ratio to be around 100% because everything is going through a flash layer. On the right, we see movers and changes, things that, um, remember, we've got this very, very detailed or um, tight integration with the hypervisor. So we can see virtual machines, which are all of a sudden grabbing a lot more performance than they were before. And we can actually highlight this to the user. We can also see that if a, uh, if a particular virtual machine is using a lot more space. This is really effective in a, in a large VDI environment because we can identify which users and which sessions are actually causing or potentially causing issues. 
And here we've got the most important two bars, really. This, um, the bottom one speaks for itself, it's space, so you can instantly see how much space we've got available. So for capacity planning, we want to make sure, well, can I put these extra 100 VMs on here? I can look, yep, absolutely, I've got plenty of space free. Um, but this performance reserves here is very, very unique. So the device itself, we know exactly how much performance all the components inside this Tintree device give. So we can then look at that figure, move it to one side, and then look at all of our individual VDA, VMs or our VDI environment. We can see how much they're actually pulling on the system to so see you know, what, what IO they're pushing through. So we can actually do a calculation to work out, we know how much we've got, we know how much we've used, how much is left over. And we can easily represent this in a nice graph which says, you know, you've got 60% free, you can quite easily add you know, hundreds more VMs onto this environment. So it's a great way to easily check to see if you can expand and, and capacity plan for your environment. So if we click on any of these individual VMs, we get through to something that's even more impressive, and that's the ability to look at the virtual machines themselves to see if they have any issues. So I don't know about you, but I've been called in the middle of the night in, in you know, previous jobs, and they've said, you know, my VM is running slow, it's your environment, it's your disk, or something's wrong with the environment. Can you, can you get it sorted? And then you have to look through or trawl through logs, look through VMware, or if you've got vRealize ops, and you can, it's a bit more intuitive and a bit better to get the um, information back as to where the problem may lie. But it's still quite a few steps. What we've got with the ability, no, what we've got the ability to do with the tin tree is we can pick any VM and look at all the latency across the board. So it's getting this data all the time per VM. And we can see whether, you know, we've got problems with our CPU, we've got problems with the networking, we've got problems actually writing to disk. So we can actually see where the bottlenecks lie very, very quickly. And it gives us a, a, a you know, a massive increase or a decrease in the amount of troubleshooting time uh, we've got on our environment. This in itself is just a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an unprecedented level of information that we get from a storage system. So going back to what we can do, everything, as I said before, is VM aware. So if we if we take all of our VMs, we make sure they're all deduped, we're all running, sat in, our, uh, sat in our environment. If we want to take a snapshot, we can do it on per VM. We can do it in per service group. So we can take a group of virtual machines um, or the whole environment, and we can actually snapshot them at the same time. We can also then, with those snapshots, if we wanted to, we can replicate those VMs. So we can go to another tin tree device and replicate per VM or per service group. Um, so this, we've got this multi-tenancy. We've got this ability then to split out um, these services for, for you know, your customers or your individual groups inside your organization. Uh, and we've also got the ability then to clone them out. So we can do an incredibly fast cloning system, which allows us to uh, utilize the um, VAAI or the, the, or the high level, um, sorry, low level um, storage APIs on your hypervisor to actually do all the, snap, the snapshotting and the cloning for you. So we can do things like extremely fast cloning, where we can clone up to 500 machines um, at once. So all of our snapshotting is done per VM, as I said before, and we can actually manage it all from the tin tree, which will give us this space efficient um, snapshot, 128 per individual VM. So that's, hundred, that's, that's thousands of uh, snapshots on per VM store. Um, and we can also schedule it. So we can get the tin tree itself to actually schedule these snapshots via service groups uh, with default schedulings, um, or even per VM if we wanted to. So it's very, very granular. Um, and the snapshots are all passed off to the hypervisor. So if you do wanted a you wanted a VM aware snapshot in Hyper-V or uh, VMware, for instance, uh, we can actually click a button to say, right, we want a snapshot, or we're going to take a scheduled snapshot every day, uh, three times a day, and we want to make sure it's uh, VM aware. So it will send off a command to the hypervisor, which will take the snapshot. It will then recognize that snapshot underneath, and the tin tree will take over. So we have this very tight integration again with our with our hypervisor layer. And managing it's very simple. We literally click on a particular VM or service group, and we can actually choose, you know, this snapshot schedule. Don't necessarily have to do it from the tin tree. You can do it from uh, your hypervisor environment as well. As soon as you take a snapshot, the hypervisor can pass those functions directly off to the tin tree to actually do the work. And then if we wanted to replicate it, it's literally a tick, tick box here, which says, right, protect this snapshot. Uh, and if you're doing a service group, it will do the whole service group. 
very, very simple. Cloning, as I said, it's very, very quick. So we use very, very space efficient uh, clones. So we can create up to 500 clones at once. So imagine provisioning a large VDI workload. It's very, very quick to do. Uh, we don't have to worry about waiting for these clones to, to take effect. It happens almost instantly. And I can show you a, a little bit later on if we get time. They are very, very space efficient, zero space until uh, you actually start using them, and they have no performance impact. And we still have all the same level of isolation that we did, to, that we did before. The device itself supports many to one replication. So if you did have multiple sites, you can actually pull them back automatically into one major site. And we do this to make sure it's WAN efficient. And we use our um, deduplication mechanism as well to make sure we certainly spend, send the smallest amount of data over the wire. <clears throat> and once again, because we want to present the data quite easily to users, there's a, there's a great UI which allows us to just look at how, much, how your replication is doing, how much it's got remaining for individual VMs or service groups. Some of the things we can do is um, also secure the environment. So we can use things like self-encrypting disks or um, encrypted systems, which allow us to encrypt the data um, at rest and, also, um, and in flight um, and, and store this data encrypted uh, on, your in, on your actual tin trees. We can also do things like key rotation as well to make sure that we, uh, we, we, we maintain the highest level of encryption on your system. So the Sintry is, is constantly developing. Um, since since we've, we've seen them, they've really come on leaps and bounds from the early days, and they bring on more features all the time. The latest few features are things like multi-hypervisor support, they support VMware Red Hat, Hyper-V, OpenStack, Citrix Zen, multiple different hypervisors. Uh, they've released automation toolkits for these individual systems. So if you've got your own portals or your own uh, provisioning systems, you can actually integrate the Tintree with that to provide the same level of functionality you do from within your own portals. They support things like SRM. <clears throat> Some of the really interesting features they brought out are things like Sync VM and QoS. So Sync VM will allow us to take snapshots of particular virtual machines. Um, if you imagine we've got a, uh, a development environment, uh, we can take a snapshot all of our production uh, and then synchronize this out to multiple development VMs. Now, if we want to make uh, make changes, testing, or we want to resynchronize those changes back, we can actually choose that master VM and then push the changes back to all your child VMs that you've created from it. Uh, and we can travel backwards and forwards, hence the DeLorean in the corner there. And this will allow us to synchronize these child VMs uh, with these masters at any point in time. Now, this is great for a test and dev environment, but it's also very good for a VDI environment. You think you've got a clone, uh, you've got your central um, golden image. If you start making changes to the golden image, pushing out those changes, instead of deleting all of your existing VMs and then re-pushing them out again, what we can do now is we can just synchronize them. So we can synchronize all these these children VMs, all these VDI sessions, with our global master very, very easily. It also provides us a different level of um, system. So what we can do with Sync VM is actually look at a particular point in time, these snapshots, and we can actually do a file level restore from those individual, um, that, that individual point in time. We've also got the ability to do quality of service on per VM. So we can do this per VM or per service groups, and we can actually assign minimum and maximum thresholds for the, for the IOPS of any particular virtual machine. <clears throat> this means we can define service tiers for your customers, or if you've got multiple groups, as I said before, inside your organization, we can easily um, split those up that way. I've mentioned those already. So scalability, this is a question we get asked over and over again. So the, the device itself is a single device. Um, it's completely self-contained. Um, and what happens is if we want to increase it, uh, we would put another one in its place or with it. So they don't cluster as such. They're individual devices, individual data stores. Uh, but we make it very, very easy to add extra ones in. So this system itself takes literally minutes to set up. We can have the whole thing uh, installed uh, in less than an hour and um, presented to your environment. But what we can do is we can keep adding these VM stores to provide you with more power and performance to your environment. And we can also manage them um, as a whole. So we can use something called Tintree Global Center, which will allow us to um, 
do the majority of tasks uh, across the board. So it treats all of your VM stores or your Tindry devices as one effectively. And we present you know, a very easy to use view again uh, using the Tindry Global Center. And this will allow us to manage multiple systems up to 32 for instance. Um, and it sits inside your virtual environment as a, as a deployed OVA and will allow us to do things um, globally across the board. So we can we can create service groups, we can look back 30 days of history to see what's happened with our uh, VM environment. We can manage all our applications, snapshotting, and we can fully manage these VM stores with, with this T3 Global Center. So the devices themselves, and there are three main um, what we call hybrid devices. So they're a mixture of flash and hard disks. <clears throat> and we generally rate them on the number of VMs that they'll comfortably support. So we'll see that at the top, the, the largest model, something called a T880, which supports roughly 3,500 VMs. Um, and it gives you an, an effective capacity there after deduplication. All of the devices themselves are, are you know, a full enterprise models, so they all support um, dual controllers, dual power supply, everything is, is fully failover and fully resilient. Um, and they, each of the devices present this one logical data store. Um, and it presents it via um, NFS for things like VMware or KVM, or it presents it via SMB3 for Hyper-V environments. So very, very easy to deploy and present to your existing environment with a minimal of, uh, minimal of changes from those systems. Uh, as, as I said before, the software is the same, so we get all the deduplication, the compression, um, and all of the encryption um, across all the models. So some of the things that we've recently introduced, uh, the ability to have an all flash array. So as, as before, we had our individual um, mixture of flash and hard disks. Now we've got the ability to actually have an all flash array. So if you're looking at VDI environments and you've got these large VDI or persistent VDI environments, um, an all flash array becomes a really good um, option for those systems because it really provides us the power we need. And it still has all the same built-in software, it's still the same level of deduplication, um, but the SSDs are a lot faster and so is the MVRAMs as well, so we can provide a lot more power to your environment. Again, very simple to install and deploy, works in exactly the same way. So we've, we've kind of moved on, and since you see themselves as separate to the, uh, the DAS, the NAS, and the SAN world, uh, they, they view themselves as VM-aware storage, something that's truly designed for virtualized workloads, uh, almost like the next evolution in storage, if you like. There's a really interesting um, validation report on uh, Tanir's website you can actually go to. It's actually on Tintree's website as well. And they actually compare the Tintree to um, existing, uh, more like more, more of a monolithic um, array, where they took a, a light for light comparison and they actually looked to see how well the Tintree performed. And they found that everything was you know, like six times better or faster than the comparable systems that were out there. Um, it was much more dense, so we were able to get a lot more systems, a lot more um, VMs uh, on the platform because of their effective deduplication techniques um, than any of the competitors. And the management time, um, the, you really don't get an appreciation for it until you actually see the box, but it's so simple to find any issues in your environment. So if you have VMs, as I said before, you can easily ch check the latency of any particular VM or VDI session and instantly see whether it's a, a CPU problem or you know an under-resource uh, problem um, and very very quick to do so they found a huge amount of time was saved on actually all these management tasks um, so yeah it's a really quite an interesting port to have a look at and I definitely worth recommend reading it as we said before if we look at it compared to traditional systems if we look at a traditional um, RAID away, we would have multiple individual RAID groups, we'd have individual LUNs coming off of them, perhaps adding SSD in there to actually speed up certain LUNs. And these are great for, for you know, if we want to basically increase the cache on particular LUNs, uh, but it makes it very difficult to manage and very, very difficult to move around um, and quite unpredictable when you start adding uh, VMs into, into those individual data stores. Whereas if we have a tin tree, it's very simple. It's a single data store. We throw everything into that data store, and it manages it the best way it can, looking at all these individual VMs, how they're working, what their computer's like, what their I.O. profile is like, and making sure they get the fastest level of access to disk. 
Meanwhile, they also make sure that they don't get affected by any noisy neighbors, so you don't get this IO blender issue. And if you look at the actual um, traditional storage uh, for virtualization, so if you look at a VDI environment, it, you get a much more dense um, environment from Tintree. So we can put for a full um, stack of tin trees in, in a single one in a single rack we can get up to 35,000 vms whereas it would be an equivalent net app we would be looking you know three or four um, racks to get the same level of um, vms in our system so we can save a lot more money um, by putting a tin, a tin tree system in place so we've talked a lot about Tintree, the way it works. Um, it's probably worth looking at the way um, it can benefit VDI environments. So if we look at um, Tintree itself, because we've got the ability to mix these, these workloads, and we're just looking at a virtualized workload. We don't care basically what it does. We're just watching these workloads and making sure we get the best access to disk. So this allows us to actually have um, a huge amount of performance out of these. Uh, without uh, and, and fully isolate those systems. So some of the benefits really are the things like intuitive administration. We've got this very, very simplistic UI, which we can integrate into your uh, your ordinary tool set. So if you've got vRealize operation suite, you can put it in that. So you can also put it into the um, SCOM suite as well, SCVMM. You've got the ability to have a much, much simpler and more intuitive admin interface for these things. It's a simple deployment. VDI is quite difficult to deploy at the best of times because you've got to really plan ahead. Um, it's very, very simple to actually get a tin tree in place. Um, and, and from day one, you'll see immediate benefits to the way your VDIs are deployed. Plug and play scalability. So we don't have to worry about extending volumes, extending LUNs. We don't have to worry about extending the cluster itself. If you want to expand your existing tin tree away, we, we, can, we can look at the screen to instantly see how much capacity we've got available. If we needed to add more, we would put another Tintree data store in place. And instantly we can start balancing onto that as well. It's got built-in QoS. So all of the individual VMs, they automatically monitor their uh, quality and their performance isolation. But if we wanted to, we can quite easily um, provide a service group or provide a certain VMs with um, a set of quality of service rules to make sure that it gets the best level of performance for those. And as I said before, we get the industry best virtual density. A huge amount of VMs can be served from one of these devices. One of the interesting points as well is that we get ultrabook performance. Now, when we actually did some validation with VMware, we did some view planning on the on the on the Tintry environment. In this this case, it was a slightly older hybrid device, um, but inside the Group A latency test, we were getting uh, an average score of 0.57 seconds. To put this into perspective, if you have a, a an ultrabook performance, it's classified as one second uh, latency. So the average ultra, ultrabook will take uh, around about one second uh, latency for average applications. So the smaller the the, uh, the time scale, the better. We were getting uh, 0.57 seconds in the Group A validations, and if you compare that to a a, a pure storage array, um, so it's uh, sorry, pure flash array, so everything's in flash, all flash arrays, um, we were getting 0.52 seconds. So literally, it was only uh, 0.5 of a second faster um, to have a pure um, all flash array. However, the price difference was three to five times more than the Tintry itself. So the, the, the benefits of the system, the performance of the system really speak for themselves, especially in a VDI environment. And as I say, the testing was done with um, <clears throat> over a, a thousand desktops. Some of the other benefits that I mentioned before was fast cloning. So we, I can show you this in a little bit. Uh, we can actually take a particular VM, we can take a um, the VM on our system, and we can instantly clone up to 500 machines at, the, at a time. And these will all be thin provisioned and very, very quick to deploy. Uh, you imagine a large VDI deployment, this really speeds up your, your delivery time for those individual VMs. As I said before, full isolation, so we don't have to worry about um, noisy neighbor problems. And it also means we can mix our workloads. Up until now, we've always made sure that our VDI environment is completely separate from our server environment. Now we've got the ability to mix the two. So if we do need to have space for our servers on there as well, we can do. We can make sure that those servers won't be affected by the performance of your VDI environment. 
Um, it also supports multiple hypervisors, and they've got lots of um, ratifications for um, Citrix Zen, uh, VMware View as well, as a, as a ratified solution for, for VDI deployments. Uh, you can find a lot more information on Tintree's website for that. <clears throat> and I've actually mentioned isolation twice there on this slide deck, I've just noticed. Um, but yeah, all of our individual per VM operations are isolated as well. So we can we can take snapshots, we can take clones, we can replicate, and we can do this per VM without affecting other systems. Um, and everything's hypervisor um, agnostic, but also we've got the deep level of uh, integration with hypervisors and allow us to um, talk to the hypervisor to do things like um, storage snapshots and storage replication and take that valuable CPU and processing time away from your hypervisors uh, to give you more performance to your VMs. And we can provide all flash speeds even in our hybrid devices, even though there are there is a, an all flash array which Tintree provide. Um, and last of all, Sync VM. So Sync VM will allow us to easily get uh, back data, and we can go backwards and forwards in time with these snapshots. But we can also push out changes massively to all of our uh, environment based on a gold image update, for example. So Tintree themselves, I'm going to just skip past most of this slide. Um, they were founded back in 2008 by um, by Kieran Harty, who is the uh, the VP of development for VMware, um, and they've really come on leaps and bounds. We see that um, uh, all the time. People that that buy a Tintree device come back for more. They they love the the devices and the, the freedom it gives them, uh, but they love the ability to troubleshoot and all of those all of the things which you wouldn't really normally expect from a storage array. Um, they seem to rave about. So um, we use them internally here. They're a, they're just a you know a fantastic product, and we swear by them. And they've got and um, customers across the board in all verticals. <clears throat> so that's that's the end of my um, my my spiel, if you like, talking about Tintree. Um, we've got a little bit of time now, so I can actually show you a uh, a demonstration of the of the GUI and what it can do. Um, so we'll we'll move on to that. So as I said before, everything's managed by this um, by this simple interface. And it presents the single data store out to um, our VM environment. So we look at our individual environment. It presents it out as a single data store, this here. Quite simple to manage, quite simple to deploy. Um, and as I said before, we've got up-to-date IOPS. So these are all updated every few seconds, every 10 second averages. Uh, and they give you the information for your IOPS throughput, your flash hit ratio, which we expect to be around 100%. But we have this latency, and if we hover over this, we can actually see um, average latencies from across the board. So we've got 425 machines running actively on this box at the moment. We're using hardly any of the, uh, the performance on this box. Uh, and it's a mix of VDI sessions and um, server sessions um, across our labs here. And we can actually see the latency is actually split out. So if we actually click on that, we can actually get a detailed breakdown of um, all of the individual things. And we can actually scroll back seven days to actually see if we've had any latency spikes or any issues across the board. And we're talking, you know, less than a millisecond of latency here. So it's it's not really a, uh, a great demo, I suppose. But what we can do is we can actually click our individual VMs. Uh, and we can hover over one, so this one here, where um, we've got some we've got some latency. We can actually look, and we can see that most of well, half of that's going to be a host-based latency. We can click on that particular box um, and get a breakdown of this latency, so we can actually see if we've got any spikes in CPU or memory utilization on this box. Uh, and we can again, we can scroll back seven days if we wanted to. We can do things like um, look at the CPU and memory. Now, from a storage device, this is this is an unprecedented level of information we get back from the hypervisor. But this just shows you the level of integration that the system has. If we wanted to, we can do things like <clears throat> configure quality of service. As I said before, we're actually going to we're going to set some uh, maximum of 100, minimum is 20. There we go. So we can actually um, get quality of service on here, and we can actually manage it very, very simply. So if we look here, 
we can actually click our quality of service and by easily sliding bars up and down we can actually provide it with a certain amount of IOPS for that box and these are immediately affected so it's actually it will actually start um, actively monitoring that particular VM making sure it gets that IOPS available very very simple again if we wanted to set up a service group so a group of different VMs we can click service groups create a group and add them in to actually provide that information um, and we can do things like snapshotting and replication etc all within that group makes things very very easy um, so if I was going to show you something like um, nope I'm not going to show you that one it's intriguing So if, if we wanted to create clones, we can actually right click on here, press clone, and we're going to create, um, well, for this instance, we'll just create 50 clones. Um, and we can choose our guest customization. So it integrates with your hypervisor again and tells it, right, well, which guest customization do you want to use? Uh, in this case, we're not going to use anything. Uh, and we'll use it as it, as it current uh, crash consistent state. But if we wanted to, we can actually do it as a, a VM consistent um, clone as well. Um, so if I actually open up my VMware environment, <clears throat> we look at our clone here, what we can do is when we actually run this command here, clone, if we look back at our VM environment here, we can see that very, very quickly we'll have all of these populated in our system. So creating clones, and these are ready to go. So these actual boxes now, these this 50 clones I've created in, in less than a few seconds um, are all ready to go, individual clones. Um, so you imagine a VDI deployment, it's very, very quick to actually provision a lot of systems um, in a very, very short space of time. So, and again, it will do all the guest customization if we needed to as well. So yeah, the level of integration is quite incredible with the system itself. Um, and yeah, very, very simple views. Um, lastly, I'll show you quickly the, uh, the sync VM function. So we've got the ability to look at our individual boxes and we can, we can actually synchronize these, these virtual disks out. So if we have a clone, we can actually, or a master, um, golden image we can actually refresh the disks out of it so all of our individual VMs that came from that will get a refresh of its latest version um, or we can do individual file level restore from within the GUI itself so we can actually click restore VM of files uh, we can choose when we're, our snapshot was taken I'm actually gonna have a quick look at the box first and delete some data to actually come back to So we'll delete that ultra important data. Whoops. And what we've got the ability to do is we can actually take this um, this snapshot and uh, restore it. So this will allow us to <clears throat> restore the entire thing. Oh, I just choose restore from a VM so a snapshot rather than actually restore files. Uh, but this allows us to actually go back to any particular point in time or forward as well. Because we know that if we take multiple VMware snapshots, um, we're actually moving backwards and forwards is not possible because we start re uh, removing all of the v the snapshots we've taken after that event. But this will actually um, allow us to avoid that completely. We can actually carry on moving forward. Um, so yeah, so I've got the ability here to, to restore the whole VM from a snapshot or individual files. I just happened to choose the wrong one. <laughs> so yeah, very, very simple. All the integrations there, it's a it's a it's a great it's a real boon to your environment to be able to uh, look at your your whole virtualization environment from this point of view uh, especially as I said the latency um, that, that really just speaks for itself the ability to actually see if you've got problems with with hosts or memory or end utilization of a particular uh, VM's resources you can see it all from this console and alert on it as well very very simple um, and we've got the ability to very quickly see whether we can expand the capacity. So we know that we've got plenty of uh, performance available on this box, so we can quite easily load this Tintry up with more VMs and not have to worry about it. Yes. 
Log back in. individual files from that machine. So guest OS file, which ones are going to snapshot? So we'll do this one here, manual snapshot, restore. So this will allow us to take a go back to any particular snapshot and represent it as the disk as a separate disk inside that VM. So very, very quickly be able to recover files um, from this system rather than recover the whole VM, which I just did. Let it finish. So we've got this disk again, which we can actually uh, just enable the disk, export the volume, and we've actually got that data we can pull back. Very, very quick to actually restore files built into the actual storage array itself. So there we go. I've shown you a quick overview of the, the Tintree, how it works, what it does, uh, and how it can benefit your environment. Um, yeah, we'll... Uh, we'll Go back over to our uh, our view here. Bear with me. Right. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to um, to use the question box. Um, Gareth, I don't know if you want to add anything. No, thank you very much for that, Jason. It was it was excellent and very comprehensive. Um, as I say, um, j uh, any questions that do come out, whether you've got them now or whether you want to raise them raise them with us later. Um, you can email them to me at gareth.dryden at openreality.co.uk. Um, we'll uh, be very happy to catch up with you all afterwards and uh, and find out find out find out what you thought or how we can help you further. Jason, any anything else? No, no, I think we're good. I think everyone's gone gone silent. Uh, yeah, I think we'll call it a day. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. And thank you, Jason.